Half a world away, industrialization has already taken place along the central coast of California. Now the ranchers, restaurants, and grocers are working to move in the opposite direction. I think that they're just thinking big plant again rather than small plant, you know, we just don't need that. Deb Garrison has spearheaded an innovative approach. She calls it the Coast Grown Cooperative. It provides a glimpse into the future and the past. Um, in the 50s, we still had a grocery store that would go up to the ranches and purchase um, meat from those ranches. They were able to have their own little butcher shops and they cut their meat right there and we purchased it from them. Uh, regulations be started to come into play at that point. With good reason. Industrial feedlots and slaughterhouses are breeding grounds for diseases and pollution. Deb's vision has found a way to comply with this thicket of regulations and still meet a growing demand for responsible local beef. Her co-op will be the first of its kind in California. Oh, you found it! <laughs> in this day and age now, I think we're coming full circle. Um, people are aware now of the, um, the costs that were hidden with large industrial type of uh, food production and they're asking questions. And because they're asking questions, it's causing a demand for us to scale down again and to come full circle back to that grocery store that we used to go to in the 1950s. The first step is to recruit local ranchers. In theory, this should be easy. Not only will members be able to set their own price, they should expect to make 15 to 20 percent more money, and they won't have to ship their cattle for USDA inspection. That translates to more money for less work. And we have all these cattle and all these ranches around, well, slowly they're diminishing, but to keep all these ranches alive, to keep them profitable, um, why not have, why not finish it here? For the Poet family, Elizabeth is the sixth generation to raise livestock. The Rancho San Julian has been in their able hands for more than 150 years. Today, it's shrouded in marine fog rolling in across the coastal hills. As the fog lifts, it reveals pastures and cattle against a natural backdrop that more and more consumers are beginning to appreciate. What I'm trying to do is I would like the cattle to be born and raised and finished on the ranch, and that's um, what I think is best for the animal, I think it's best for the beef and, and best in the long run for the, um, for the environment. Returning to the old ways solves many of our problems, but government regulations have made that difficult to achieve. The ranchers in the, um, our area, um, here on the Central Coast and all over California, um, cannot sell portion cuts of their animals to, let's say, um, any consumer if it's not USDA inspected. You have to travel miles, miles and miles, to bring your animals to a USDA-approved site if you want to sell beef. Most cities or towns do not have USDA slaughterhouses anymore because our industrial um, food processing has taken those all away. They've shut them down. So that's the problem. Deb's solution is to bring the inspector and the slaughterhouse to the ranch. After a bit of engineering, she's put the whole show on wheels. Behind us you'll see our mobile harvest unit that we acquired back in 2003. Um, it's taken us quite a while to get through all of the compliance issues that we need to to be able to use this unit for USDA Food Safety Inspection Service. Yeah, we, got it. we need a big foam pad or something there. USDA and the Food Safety Inspection Service have just in the past few years really started to concentrate on smaller plants. So they've made it a little bit easier for the smaller plant to comply, although you can get a mobile harvest unit in your area, but it doesn't mean that you can s sell portion cut USDA inspected meat. You still have to have that plant that you're connected to in order to be able to do the cut and wrap piece of it. So it's a, it's a two-step, two-phase situation to make it work. They're all off prime ribs. Okay. Jim Fogel is phase two. He's the manager of the Paso Meat Company. 
like the mobile harvesting unit. This small town facility is USDA compliant, but it feels like something from a history book. And, I mean, that's what we try to do here is uh, give them what they want. Instead of going to like, a local grocery store and getting what they have, we want to give them what they want. No parsley. Boy, that's good. It's got 13 spices in it. You might be in business. Cool. One, two, three, four. That's perfect. Good. There's a paper trail that's 100 miles long where there's one cattle or 100, you know. Uh, Everything, I mean, everything from time, temperature, name, it's all recorded from beginning to end. Uh, and it's, it's not any different here than it is in a big slaughter plant. It's just, I, I think basically we just got a little bit more control in what we're doing. Yeah, this here is a part of the facility that was built uh, especially for the MHU, the Mobile Harvesting Unit, and that helps us preserve our USDA integrity of the unit by encapsulating it in the building. Right there, we got 280 pounds right there. And from here, the animal's tagged, name, weight, date, floor controls on the sinks, those were added. Okay, these are restricted ingredients. This is just a sheet and another piece of paperwork there. Now in the freezer here, this here's an addition that was put in for the USDA compliance. This is just a holding area. If they choose to quarantine an animal and they need to freeze it, we put it in this area, they slap their lock on it, and it's unable to be messed with or until they open it up, until they let us. We've got a man on site at one ranch, okay? If there's a problem with that animal, that problem is solved, contained right there, right at that time. It, does, it never comes in. This restaurant in Santa Rosa, California, has found that buying local grass-fed beef actually brings in more business. Uh, you need to uh, use clarified butter because there's less fat in the grass-fed beef. Season it properly and medium, medium to high heat, not very high heat. The benefits of being local is the fact that the animals are less stressed because they are here. People drive by and actually see the pastures and can put a face on the farmer and producer. Customers are actually asking for the product now. People are happy to, to pay the extra money for these products. Uh, then they know that their product is safe. This farmer's market sells healthy grass-fed meat, which means no fattening with grain. There are other labels. Organic beef means no hormones for the cows and no fertilizers for the grass. Natural doesn't affect how beef is grown, but refers to flavor additives and other processing. Right now, big companies are watching with interest as these markets grow. Say the model finally gets figured out on how to do that efficiently, and so then once that's figured out, then a bigger company would just come along and just sort of just take that model, and because they could do it on a larger scale, you know, would just wipe out the, the little guy. And when that happens, it's right back to business as usual. The only way to know for sure where the meat came from is to buy it directly from the local producer. Local really kind of points people out and you can't sit, if you're local, you're local, if you're not, you're not. People want to put a face with the products that they're consuming. People want to know where their meat is coming from. They want to know that the animals were raised in this beautiful type of environment, on the rangelands, not in feedlots, and for the most part, raised mostly on grass.